no world. Ross represent the New Black Alliance. Shout out to my comrade. Good. The title. This is what I want to speak about to the family. The Jesus slash savior complex. Do black people have what we call complex? Do we have a savior complex? Basically, are we looking for somebody to save us? Are we looking to be rescued? And this is what I want to just talk about for a little minute with y'all family. Because too many times I hear a lot of us conscious folk speak about who has the solutions, who's going to commit forward, is that I hear. And my issue with that is is why are we looking to lead us or maybe even a few history when we followed or a group of people when that group of people or that one person is knocked off or the group is dismembered, look what happens. Everybody goes back to living in the matrix. You can see that with the Black Panthers. You know, everybody was black power, you know? But as soon as they were infiltrated and taken down, everybody went back to going back to work, you know? People didn't have their own businesses no more. People gave up. People stopped striving. The people that was part of the movement stopped the movement. Why is that? Why, if the leaders of the movement is taken down, why doesn't the movement keep going? If the movement is for the people and it's by the people, then why don't the people keep the movement going? And I'm asking these questions, family, because I'm tired of us always having this big discussion on why we can't get things together. I think we spend too much time on that. You know, and I just think it's a level, it's levels to consciousness, you know, because I was at a point, you know, in my process, and I'm still in the process, because I don't feel like, you know, consciousness is something that's stagnant. I believe consciousness, your consciousness is supposed to grow. Your awareness is supposed to grow. I don't think it ever should ever stop. But, you know, coming into becoming aware to a lot of things, I was like that too. I was so caught up on what they were doing to us, what's going on with us, who's going to help, who's going to stop this? When are we going to stop this? But I never thought back then, what role was I going to play in stopping it? And this is why. I think we suffer from that complex, the Jesus complex, because we looking for somebody to save us from ourselves. And why I say from ourselves is because 
you have a lot of people that get on the YouTube and tell you certain things, but a lot of them are afraid to really fight for freedom. You know, because it's an everyday thing. If you're serious about this, it becomes your lifestyle. You know, sometimes my wife get upset with me because I just like to be up and just taking in information. You know, this this has become my lifestyle. When she met me, I was like this. I've been I've been with my wife going on seven years now. You know? So if this is not your lifestyle, it's harder for you to see what role you're gonna play. See, it's easy for us to look to somebody and to say, well, what are you gonna do for us? But that's just like going to church and asking the pastor, well, what does this passage mean? Or what did Jesus mean when he said this? It's the same thing. You see? Are we aware that we've traded in our white Jesus for Horus, for Yeshua, for Isa or Musa? You see, we just these people in but we say we conscious so are we aware that you went from worshiping jesus to worshiping horus it's still the same mindset and this is the mindset that black people suffer from nowadays we're looking for a savior. We're looking for somebody to come and stop this. Well, it's gonna stop. It's gonna always be. It's gonna always exist. It's up to each individual to make a decision in their own minds to wanna stop it. And everybody say, oh, it has to be a collective. It has to be a collective. A collective of what, though? See, we have to put things in context. We have to stop just saying blanket statements. We have to put it in context. A collective of what? See, my motto was sheep stay sleep. That's my motto. If you a sheep, if you not aware, Stay unaware. I'm not helping you wake up. You know? You know, a lot of people like being zombies. So let them stay a zombie. Because just like you got to want to wake up, just like I had to want to wake up, and every other person who woke up, at one point they will sleep too willing to wake up or want to wake up, sheep stay asleep. So a collective of what? A collective of who? I agree. It should be a collective, but a collective of like minds. Who's aware are not like-minded. So everybody's not to be worked with. You see, I believe we should work on skill sets. That's how I believe if we want to do this thing as a collective, it'll work. Because the white supremacist system is developed and it permeates through multi-levels 
facet of our lives. So when we say a collective of collective of who? Because white supremacist ideology reigns in the world of sex, finance, law, just to name a few. Collectives of those type of people with those skill sets to attack those issues. We don't just need in people together to do. You see? Because all that's going to do is have a bunch of people in one area. And you know when black people are grouped up in one area with no direction, arguments and fights ensue. You see? We need direction. And maybe that's why we're looking for a savior because we don't want to direct ourselves. And that's the problem. And we don't want to direct ourselves because we don't want to hold each other accountable. See, that's the thing. That's why we want leaders. So we can have somebody to blame. So when it all boils down and everything fall and crumble, we could point to one person or we could point to these groups of people and say, they messed this up. It's because of them. And that's what was done in all other black movements that was dismembered. You always got a a black person that could point to a, a person that was part of the movement. But these same older people who was around in that time cannot tell you what role they played on on their level. See, everybody has a part to play. So you may you may not have been on the front line. But what were you doing? What were you doing? You can do something. What were you doing? I know what you were doing. You were sitting back watching what somebody else was doing and then critiquing it. And then saying that should have been done and that should have been done, but you did nothing. You see? And then when that person's efforts failed, then what you do? Oh, see, see, I knew, I told you, you see. Meanwhile, that same person was scared to stand up for something on their own. And this is why we have the Jesus complex. Because we want somebody to blame. I got another video y'all could check out on my channel. It's called the escape goat syndrome. It ties right into this. See, we looking for leaders because we looking for somebody to blame. We don't want to blame ourselves. We don't want to say we fuck this up. We want to say it was because of them. See, the lack of accountability and the lack of responsibility We will never become successful. See, when you always looking for somebody to blame for something, you will never grow. You see? So all the things that us in this quote unquote conscious community or, you know, thing that we call this that we doing, We need to all sit back and start to figure out as individuals, what are we doing and what role are we going to play? You see, even if you just a voice. You see, 
But if you're not a voice, if you're not doing anything, then I can understand why you're looking for a leader. See, I'm not looking for a leader. You see, I'm looking for people with skill sets that want to create institutions and businesses that help their people. Because that's what I believe is going to is going to help us progress. Not a bunch of people following people and saying, oh, yeah, we going this way. To me, that's childish. We're all adults. You see. And then we got to stop and think when we want to follow these leaders. We got to stop and think that these people are flawed. Nobody stops and thinks that. Hey, these people are human. They're flawed. So then, when your favorite leader does something you don't like or don't agree with, then you want to ostracize them. You see? How do we ostracize the same people we claim to love and support when they don't do what we want them to do? That's just like saying, God, you said you was going to help me pay my light bill, but they cut my lights off. God, you didn't hear my prayers. It's the same thing. So why are we looking for humans to follow? Why aren't we following the information and building our own constructs and our minds to follow? You see? We're following personalities now. We're not following the information. You see? And I'm not going to lie, you get caught up in it. Because I even got caught up in the personalities for a little while. But see, then I also know too, never to be a fanatic. Because see, something my dad taught me when I was a little boy. He always told me, don't follow no man. Men stand on their own. You see? And that always stuck with me. And that's why I teach my sons this. Stop trying to fit in, stand out. See, so when you when you looking for a leader, you looking for something to be a part of, and what you may be trying to be a part of may not may not be good for you. But you may not find that out until you had to lose something. And this is what happens when we start following these quote unquote conscious leaders. See, we start losing hope in black power when you find out somebody been taking your money. When you found out that water you was drinking is really getting you sick and not healing you. When you find out that paperwork can't free you. See, then what you start doing is you start drifting back into the matrix. Because now you lost. Because you was lost in the beginning and you were seeking guidance through somebody else instead of through yourself. And this complex is what holds us back. Oh, well, he's supposed to be a leader. He's not supposed to do that. That man is not beyond reproach. 
That man got emotions and feelings. Yes, should we critique his behavior? Yes, should we critique her behavior? Yes, because they're calling themselves a leader. So yes, they should be critiqued. But just because somebody call themselves a leader don't mean you should follow. If they got good information that you could take and build off or do that, but don't follow them. Don't follow them. You see? And I don't think we got out that mentality, family. See, we may have left the church, but church hasn't left us. It hasn't left our mindset. Because just like people went to church and just listened to what the pastor said and followed the pastor, we doing that sitting up in these lectures, sitting up in these debates sitting up on these people live streams cursing people out who don't follow the next person you see it's the same mentality same mentality the savior complex we looking for somebody to come and save us because we really don't want to do the work. You see, we like to always talk about we waiting for the white man to come and save us. We shouldn't be waiting for no man to come save us. White, black, purple or blue. We shouldn't be waiting for nobody to come and save us. We should wake up every day as a family and work on freeing ourselves and saving ourselves. And the collective should be a group of like-minded people. And it should be many groups of like-minded people. Black Wall Street wasn't one big movement. It was groups different groups that came together to make black wall street it wasn't a hundred thousand black people together who decided to open up businesses simultaneously that's nonsense that don't make sense let's start thinking practical so we really think all black people gonna wake up at once that don't make sense, man. That's like saying, because you work the morning shift at your job, you got to only be to work at seven. You got some people who work six to two. You got some people who work seven to three. You got some people who work eight to four. Those are all the morning shifts. But people going to wake up and go to work at the same time. So it's the same thing with revolution and with consciousness. Everybody's not going to wake up at the same time. So all of this collective stuff, we need to recontextualize it, put it in context. Because all that sound like to me is a bunch of sheep wanting to follow behind a shepherd. That's what that sound like to me. That sound like a bunch of church members following their pastor. But don't know the word for themselves. You see? And this is why we're held back. Because of this complex You see? We're becoming fanatics of personalities. Consciousness has become a religion. 
Now you got religious zealots. But guess what? Let something happen to one of their favorite conscious personalities. They might go back to selling drugs. They might go back to using drugs. They might go back to robbing people. You know why? Because instead of that person using the information to grow, they use that person's ego and persona to make them feel like they're doing something that they're not doing. Or make them feel like they're somebody that they're not. You see? That's just like avid churchgoers feeling like they're good Christians because they go to church every Sunday. But don't apply none of no scripture to their life. Don't live by none of the laws and the principles of the Bible. But because they sit up in church and listen and say hallelujah and stomp their feet and run around in circles so everybody can see them, they think they praising God correctly. And that they are faithful servant. You see? We suffer with the same mentality dealing with consciousness. We're not taking the information and growing. See, that's why there's still room for more and more debates because people want to go there and see their two favorite personalities clash. People are not getting nothing out of these lectures, out of these debates, I mean. They're not getting nothing out of them. You see? Because all they're going to do is come home and write on their statuses on Facebook about who they think had the flyest presentation. Not that they're going to come home and actually look something up. Or not that they went to the lectures and bought some books about the information that was being talked about so they could grow and in turn do something. They just want to go and hear people make them feel good. Sound like church to me. Sound like any religious institution to me. And this is why you have your high personalities, they get paid a lot of money to do lectures and debates. They like high paid pastors. See? You gotta pay them brothers when they're in town because they gonna bring the people out. <laughs> it's just like church, man. Because everybody want to get that good word. But what does that good word do for you? If you're not going to apply that good word. Huh? Or you want somebody to apply it for you. Or you just want somebody to say they applied it for themselves and you can just follow them. Because that's what I see is what's going on. Everybody want to know why we stuck. This is why we stuck. Because we still worrying about who could save us. We still worrying about who got the answers. 
who got the solutions? We all have the solutions. We all do. We all do. Some of the people I met since I've been doing my live streams, man, I done heard them say more profound stuff than I've ever heard these brothers talk about on, in a debate. So, I mean, why can't we solve our own issues? Because we don't want to fail, family. We don't want to fail, get up and regroup and do it again. And fail, get up and do it again. That's what it is. That's really what it is. See, we want to talk about building a nation, but we don't want to deal with the responsibilities of having one. And what is actually going to take to sustain a nation See, because once you build one, it has to be sustained. Who's going to help sustain it? You see? And this is why after the Black Panthers, there were no movements. Because there weren't, there weren't a group of people that were there to sustain the movement. Because the people who followed the movement, they just followed. You see? The movement was for the people, but the people didn't keep it moving. See, the people sat back and wanted to watch. See, that's our problem. We want to be in the game, but we want to sit on the bench and watch the game. See, we want to win a championship ring from the bench. <laughs> you know, we don't want to be in the game. So you let the star players go out there. You let the Kobe's go out there, the Tim Duncan's, the Allen Iversons. You let them go out there and play their damn hearts out and risk their life every day, risk their freedom every day, risk their kids' lives, their family lives. Put all that shit on the line so you could say, I like him. He's my leader. This is why I don't call myself a leader. Because I don't want to lead people like that. So I'm doing all this for you to just say that? So when I'm gone, the movement dies with me. And this is why I say black power's a hoax. It's a hoax. See, we need to start redefining things in 2017, family. We do. Because if we serious, we need to really be serious and get around like-minded people who are serious. So I see a lot of people like to run around with fluff, man, and feel good rhetoric. And this is why you find out these, these people are nothing but bullshitters. Because we keep falling for the feel good rhetoric. Stop falling for it, family. 
Let's get out the Jesus slash savior complex. Let's get rid of that mindset. You cannot buy your way out of freedom. Can't buy freedom, family. You can't go get a paper that say you don't got to pay traffic tickets. That's nonsense. You see? So what they do is they fashion it up for us to make it sound good, and then they take our money. Or you pay your money to these people, you go and you start spitting this crap and end up in federal prison. You see? You go buy this water that you think is supposed to heal you and then come to find out it's killing you. See, we need to stop looking for the quick fix. We need to stop looking for that. We need to stop looking for people to come and save us. Why are we looking to be saved by someone? Why, family? Please tell me. You said the Jesus story was fake. Right? It's real as a motherfucker. Because we still looking for saviors. We still looking at these conscious people as saviors. You can't save me and my family, but me and my family. Because guess what? That brother that you calling a leader, that nigga don't pay your bills. He don't put food in your mouth. He don't put clothes on your back. So what is he leading you to? See, we need to we need to really st we need to really start thinking. A leader, my leader, leading me where? Leading me how? Because you give me some information, thanks, and apply it. But you're not my leader. You see? Somebody was your leader, they'll take care of you. None of these people take care of nobody but themselves and their family. So let's stop worshiping people. Stop worshiping personalities. Learn from the information. Take what's good for you, for you, and move on. And move on. If you win this community for the shenanigans, hey, everybody like to watch wrestling. Everybody like to watch battle rap. I like to watch it too. But loaded lux can't lead me nowhere. See, so if a conscious rapper can't lead me nowhere, why could a conscious lecturer or debater lead me anywhere? 
This is DS1 Ross. Represent the New Black Alliance. Make sure y'all subscribe. Stay tuned, family. I'll be back later on. You know the highlight, y'all. Again, got some more things on my mind. So I'll be back to probably chop it up with y'all a little later.